Okay, so now what I'm going to show you guys is how to bring uh, your Rhino models into your inverse models. So uh, just for the sake of the tutorial, let's say, let's go to our inverse model real quick. This is a, a basic CAD file that I exported from GIS and I brought into Rhino. And let's say we have, uh, let's say for instance, you know, have a building, you know, in, in, in the park, for instance. Let's say you have a site, you know, right here, and you want to put your building in the site here, okay? So uh, actually, I'm going to turn off. And one thing I recommend, if you have Infoworks open um, while you're working, turn off all the high visual quality and the ambient occlusion, because this basically takes up processing speed and slows down your computer. So by turning these off, uh, you don't sacrifice your computer speed for your work. So we want to build something in here. So we're, it's about right here, actually, in this model here. So in here, let's just make a new layer. I call this building uh, test. And I'm not going to be fancy about anything. I'm just going to build some basic geometry. Um, let's build some blocks. Again, it's, this will obviously be your building, uh, however you choose to model your work. Uh, just do a simple massing here. Let me do some couple of massings like there. Let's go to a rendered views or shaded views. So you can see what we have here. So let's say that's your building. Again, super simple, but yours can be more complex. The key here <coughs> is that you're building this model and you're building it within a geo, geo referenced CAD file here. You have to build this model or at least move your architectural model to this base that you've exported from GIS. Um, if you don't do that, you will have to manually move your model in Infoworks, but using this technique here, and I'll show you what, how powerful this is, is you can model your building in here, you can bring it to Infoworks, and you can change your model, you can bring it back to Infoworks and update it on the fly. So after you have your building model, select your building, export, selected, and you want to export it as either one of two files. An FBX file, uh, which is the motion boat right here, or an OBG file. Both work fine. I actually recommend FBX um, because it maintains textures a little bit better. So if you have textures in your model, you can preserve those textures uh, that way. So I'll just save it on my desktop for now. I'll actually save it in here. I'll call this uh, Chicago Architecture Test. Okay, click Save. In the export options here, you make sure you click meshes only because uh, Infrax only uh, uses mesh. And make sure you select Fong as your materials because that will preserve the materials. And just remember these settings here that I have right now. Click OK. And then you have your mesh options here. Uh, generally, uh, I recommend meshing your model, you know, higher rather than lower end because it's gonna. This is basically gonna rebuild your model as a mesh. So right here around the 75 percent range is pretty good but you can always change it if you want so click OK and then go back into Infoworks and now we add that uh, piece of data using the data management tab data sources I mean you add a 3D model right here let's go to my uh, desktop where I saved it uh, 422H Chicago Architecture Test FBX file, click open, and then double click it. You see it doesn't know what it is, and uh, usually, you know, you might think it, building makes sense. I actually, and this is a secret trick that um, you wouldn't know unless you did a lot of trial error like I did, recommend setting your models from Rhino as roads, and I'll explain why in a second. It doesn't make sense initially, but I'll, see, I'll show you why. And then in your 3D model preview window, you'll see your model comes in. The, it looks weird because the axes have been switched. Um, for whatever reason, uh, Rhino uses a completely different axis system than uh, most other programs. So always make sure you flip the uh, X and Y in order to bring it to the correct uh, orientation. And then geolocation, you want to set it to the uh, coordinate system of your GIS file. And so go back to the GIS file. This is why it's extremely important. You see your corner system set to this guy here, NAD State Plane Illinois FIPS. Um, this is what the Rhino model is being built in, so that's therefore that's what the uh, uh, corner system in here should be as well. So once that's set up like this, click close and refresh. 
And you'll see in a second that your architecture model uh, should pop up. OK, now you see this happened here. Why did this happen? It's because the terrain model is higher than what you built. So you, we built this on 0, 0, 0. If we imported the topography in here, the topography would be like at this level right here. So the solution here is perhaps when you're doing this model in Rhino, uh, also bring in your contours as well so that your model is uh, at the same elevation as your um, topography. But if you want to be quick and dirty about it, all you can do is just click on your model here and go to the Edit tab here and just move it up vertically like that. And there you go. Now you have your model in InfraWorks alongside all your building buildings. And so this is a quick, probably faster than doing it in, uh, in Rhino because you don't have to model all these buildings. And the cool, cool thing is it's very fast as well. It's not going to be slowed down by uh, Rhino speed. And then again, you can go to your visualiz visualization tab, visual effects, visual quality. You can get some sun studies going, get your ambient occlusion down to give it that soft look to it. And now, uh, after you have that done, let's say you go back to your design project and say, you know what? I don't want to make two buildings because I'm cool. I want to make, I just want to like go crazy and build two buildings here. Um, I think I, oh, I saved the default layer. So now you have two buildings. Reselect your, reselect your geometry. Export selected. Then just save over your original FBX file. Save. <laughs> Yes, replace, OK. And you can change that again, just click OK. All I need to do now in InfoWorks is refresh it. So go to your uh, data sources tab. And here you have it in rows as architecture model. Right click it and click refresh. Again, it's not going to come at the correct elevation, so that's why it's good to set up. But now you have your new model updated very fast and quickly. And <laughs> it's coming out of the ground. <laughs> that. You would not have to move it up if your buildings were at the correct elevation in your Rhino model. So just think about that as you're modeling your architecture. But there we go. Now you see this is a very quick and efficient way to get some studies down and also apply it to your urban fabric and your urban setting um, for visualization purposes. And I, I'm showing very, very rudimentary models, but as I showed you guys in the, in the studies I've done previously, and we actually model these buildings to floor plates, to windows, and that kind of thing. So if you actually had that level of detail in your model here, it would translate uh, perfectly fine into your InfraWorks model as well, so you can start to do some cool renderings in here. Um, OK, so good question. Um, how do you add textures of buildings in InfraWorks? Now, for buildings such as the ones you bring in from Rhino, you can't manually change this. You have to change these in, uh, in Rhino. But let's say you have this urban sky, skyline here. You want to put like building floors onto it. It's pretty easy to do. Um, double click on your building layer here. And you can set the rule style, base color, and also uh, roof material here. And so uh, rule style, if you click on um, this, I believe, you can choose uh, any kind of facade you want. Now, the problem with this is that it's going to uh, pick the same style for everything, but let's just say we want to pick something like that, for instance, and uh, click close and refresh. It's going to automatically uh, give every single building kind of a texture to it. It doesn't look good because it's a it's a it's a plain texture, but you know for general for general renderings, it's okay. It's it's not the greatest tool in the world. Um, so that's how you add textures to your buildings, but my recommendation, because it looks, I don't know if you guys think, think, guys think this looks good, but I don't think it looks good at all. Uh, just give it a white color. And so um, go to color and just click on white. You see it gives you this color here. Just copy that into each um, line here. And you click uh, close and refresh. I personally think this is uh, the best way to go for architectural renderings. Again, it gives you that kind of clean white model look that Heather Wolfter and Sung Ho love because they build all their models out of styrene. Um, and so this fits right into uh, WashU's uh, style of, of rendering. 